Viewfine Wearable Display Review. Welcome back. Okay, let's start off. Hi, it's Ben from the future, and if you're short on time, let me save you some. For the love of almighty God, do not buy this product. It's a train wreck within a train wreck. With that said, let's talk about some of the bad things and some of the ways in which I actually did enjoy using this product. First impressions. Weirdly, this device doesn't come charged. At this point, I feel like charging devices before they ship it should be an industry standard. We'll chalk it up to the fact that it's a younger company. I love that they come with glasses. They actually provide you with a pair of frames to attach your heads-up display to. For some reason, I just wasn't expecting that. They also gave me two mounting systems. More on this later. One of the first things I noticed is that the way the arm extends feels very cheap. Also, there's no real way to indicate that it's fully extended, so I want to keep pulling on it, but I'm very afraid that I will break it. Also, in using this device, I realize that it's much better to put it as close to your eye as the lens of the glasses will allow. I find, however, that even when I do this, it's still really hard to get the whole image into the frame. Honestly, I find that text is hard to read on this device. I really wish Viewfine had put some kind of battery indicator on this. There's really no battery indicator on the display itself, and the one light that's built into the power button doesn't function as a battery indicator unless the device is charging. Obviously, you have the estimated battery life on the box, and if you can remember how long exactly you've been using it, that could be useful, I guess. Um, getting the picture to focus is also a little bit tricky. The arm that holds it is okay, but it's not nearly stiff enough to hold it into place. I'm actually going to talk about this a little bit more later, too. Uh, but let's talk about use of the computer. Three times, when it was plugged into the laptop that I use regularly, it did this weird stuttering thing, almost like the cable was faulty. Uh, it reconnected after a moment, but the frustrating thing is that each time this happens, it changes the aspect ratio and, of course, needs to be fixed because it goes back to the default every time it disconnects and reconnects. That's not great, and uh, honestly, I don't know if it's my connector or the device itself. Maybe it's the faulty cable? I I'm really not sure. I should probably apologize for not looking into this more, but to be honest, by the time that I figured out that this was a problem, I had already realized that it was kind of a shit product, and at that point I was like, why bother? If for some reason you bought one of these and didn't return it, maybe, you know, hit me up in the comments. Next, let's talk about the mount. Honestly, these need a lot of work. What's funny to me about them is that one is too rigid and the other one is too flexible. Also, switching between the two is not simple or easy. Ideally, I would use the flexible mount. Um, here's the deal though. With ocular devices like this, the adjustment of the lens has to be perfect. Especially since once I've gotten it in the right position, I would really like to be able to lock it into place forever. This is probably the most frustrating thing about the product. I feel like I spend all my time adjusting it every time I put it on, and that's really frustrating. Next, let's talk about use with the drone. Now, granted, I don't own a drone, nor did I test the device with one, but based on my experiences, I can tell you a decent amount. Because the lens is semi-spherical, it's not uncommon to see sunspots when you're outdoors or even when you're working next to a window. What's worse is that indirect sunlight, which I did experience multiple times, the display is almost unusable. I know they presented this as a device that might be used for drone control, but frankly, I just can't see how they'd be able to do so on a sunny day. Especially given that in the use case of drone control, I need to be able to respond accurately and quickly. With the way it is at the moment, I just couldn't do that on a sunny day. Especially if the drone I'm piloting is worth any money at all. Maybe in Vancouver or England where it's always raining. I, I don't know. Something like that. Let's talk about the good use cases. Uh, sorry. Use case. Okay, so we've talked about the bad stuff. Let's talk about a good one. Uh, I did really enjoy using this for yoga. I did an entire 30 minute routine with it on. But, as mentioned, I found the flexible mount to be too flexible, so I switched to the rigid mount. I will admit that it's nice to have this display for yoga because I'm often in all kinds of crazy positions and I'm not always available to look at the screen, and I really like being able to check my form by seeing exactly what she's doing all the time. Shout out to Yoga with Adrian, by the way. The problem here is that if you want to use this device in almost any other setting, you need the flexible mount, at least for my head shape. The rigid mount doesn't allow you to see your entire screen, which is, again, a little bit frustrating. Other bad stuff. Okay, so, uh, the other issue with this headset is that if you intend to use it with a phone, you need to have your phone out to use it anyway, which feels like it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, the screen itself is surprisingly high res, although it's worth noting that because they haven't come out with subsequent generations, I think it is becoming a little bit outmoded at this point. Oh, and when you plug in your headset, the audio defaults to the device headset, which, in this case, it doesn't have any speakers, so you need to switch it back to your headphones every time you plug it in, which is frustrating. But because I was desperate to find a use case for this, I thought I could scroll through TikTok while 
keeping my phone in my pocket because that's a pretty simple finger gesture and <laughs> honestly uh the experience was pretty terrible believe it or not scrolling through tiktok in your pocket isn't as easy as it sounds also might look kind of creepy and because the screen has to be in vertical mode you can't really read the text in favorable light, let alone in sunlight. The thing that really kills me about this device is that it is not even configured to behave like a wearable. When I was walking to the train, I noticed that having it on made checking the time much easier. It was nice, like having a watch on your face, which, you know, people have talked about in other videos, but it's really shocking to me that the devs didn't include any kind of standalone mode, like something with notifications. Uh, yeah. Summary. Honestly, this device feels like two things a prototype, and a massively missed opportunity. Because this device was developed for the sake of Kickstarter, I have to say that in a way this product feels so rushed and it kind of makes a lot of sense, given that a lot of Kickstarters don't even deliver the things they offer. Um, I mean, kudos to Viewfind, I guess? I would also point out that to Viewfind's credit, there aren't a lot of other competitors and also this is a very young industry so it's hard to learn from other people's mistake and or steal good ideas even when the likes of google glass exist uh, what's what's funny to me about this is that i think they could have learned a lot from google glass but it seems like even there they didn't uh ultimately it's just kind of a hot mess i really like the idea and and the, like the concept of the product but it is nowhere near finished. Buyer beware, this is a fun gimmick and a terrible tool. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm BRBTG, and as always, I'll be right back. Wow, you made it to the very end. Thank you, friend. So I do work pretty hard on these videos, and it means a lot to me that you watch the whole thing. And since apparently you're still listening, I mean, shit, subscribe maybe?